You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for Bad Girls Club. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Bad Girls Club news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for Bad Girls Club! Yo, what up After Buzzers? It's your boy DJ Jesse Janity here in studio. All my girls left me, my bad girls left me. But I'm here in studio with Kevin Undergaro. Your, uh, yeah, your resident reality my show, Low Life. Yes. <laughs> Always happy to sit in. We love us some hot messes mm-hmm. in boy. Love them. This show is like giving what are the, what's the saying giving a machine gun to a monkey. That's yeah. that is the epitome of what this show is. Um, oh Jesse, I was supposed to ask you off the air. What's how that? like how much can I trash these guys or not? Because I know you talk to some of them, and I know a lot of them are coming in as guests. They, I, I, I believe. I mean, we just go all out. We don't hold anything back here. Um, last week, uh, definitely check the episode out. We had Natalie Nunn in studio. Um, Really cool girl. Uh, one of the the original bad girl. One it, of the, maybe one of the original bad girls. Well, Let's you, not start another Twitter war. Oh, okay, okay. Why? Because there's other ones that say that they are the premier bad yeah, girl. Oh, Natalie okay. was season four, I believe, but she claims that she's the baddest bitch, and also she claims that she runs LA. So apparently, Natalie runs LA. Um, but she was in studio, and she actually was commenting on the episode. And I don't know if you remember the scene where. Um, Judy was driving a couple of the girls, and Tiara put her finger in her, in Judy's face. Right. Well, Natalie said, if you put the finger in my face, I'm going to snap your finger off, I'm going to break it, and it's the end of the story. Right. So Tiara got a little upset, and so there's been this Twitter war going back and forth. Nice. And of uh, course, we started by AfterBuzz started TV. By After Wonderful. We, we love You know, here. when this was started, it really was, it was supposed to be fan-based, and like... <laughs> We're, we're here because we love the shows, not because we hate them or hate anything no. about them. So, so much for the love. Well, But then again, this is kind of like, these shows are the bizarro universe of shows. Meaning like, in Superman has Bizarro, which is like the exact opposite of, and the, the mutated form right. of Superman. This is like, it, it just yeah, it's just mutated. So anything goes in these, like, uh, the wacky worlds of... But to me, nothing can compare to the Bad Girls. Girls Club. It's just, you have real world, you have uh, Big Brother, and you have all these shows... 100%, people- no, you, Bad Girls, I would say some of the Housewives shows are close. I but, won't but even you're give right, them the credit, it, maybe Mob Wives. Because, no, because this is pure madness. Yeah. This is, ju- that's what I mean, Jesse, this is the bizarro universe of these, of this type of reality show. Like... I, I think that's what I'm saying. I can be honest. Oh, be, I think honest. there's so little socially redeeming values yeah. on any of them. The One of the things, reasons I, I always say I love Jersey Shore, and when I get critical of them, it's being critical of someone in my family. I love those kids. I think they're real. I'm the all one saying every week they're really good kids. They're really genuine. Uh, and they're also fun and entertaining. These guys are but fun and entertaining. even to speak on that, even to yeah. speak on that, Jersey Shore, we've been able to see... How many seasons of them? The same people over and over again. We read about them in the I know, paper. but from the first season, Jesse, they should be worse now. And and they're not. Well, I'm still right, seeing but we good only things. get one season of these guys. Um, but even in the one and season. I gotta say, I, 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 as much as I I disliked Natalie, I liked her because I liked the ones that, you know, stir up the drama and all that. But this season, the season with Natalie, you know, at the end, I just didn't. I don't know. I just picture her totally different. And meeting her in person, it was different. She had a lot of redeemable well, qualities. Well, we talk about that Stockholm syndrome, and I, I, I got to get Mark Cronin in here one week. And some of these guys who you know have made hundreds of millions doing this and who, who do it for a living. And as I've said on other shows, they have it almost down to a science. When you put all these people together, when you put them in a hostile environment, you deprive them of of phones, you deprive them of TV, 
and you just keep the booze flowing and yep. the craziness really sets in you know day one day five you know week two week three there's just different things they start doing where they unravel and so you know outside of this place separated who knows they could be decent i I and i gotta say these girls this season though i mean i know you're kind of new to the bad girls i watched it season two and three and then i got away and now i'm back and now see the thing with season uh two the earlier seasons they were kind of similar to these girls they went into the house and it was kind of quiet to me this is a quiet season i mean we're episode six right now and now it's starting to pop off this is a quiet season I'm thankful because by now two or three of these girls should have been kicked out of the house and there should have been new girls in. That's what happened. That's what happens usually. That's what you're missing from oh. like season season five is like an amazing season with uh, Leah, um, yeah, and Kristen. They just like planned on kicking half of these girls out because the whole thing is they want to. And if you notice tonight during the fight, neither of them want to punch each other first because whoever punches first gets kicked out of the house. So you just kind of push, push, push. And then once that first snap gets in, then you can go, you know, and put your arm out and attack. But what Natalie actually told me last week is Judy could go around and snap whoever she wanted and the producers would not kick her out of the house. Because they did. Because they, they love they, her so much. And well, now, because they love her so much, oh, not because I mean this season. Not because Judy she was so is, harassed. Well, she is harassed in this, but I mean this season, who's more entertaining than Judy? Judy's definitely the lightning rod. <laughs> And and I give Judy, I hated her the first episode, but then yeah. when I saw all the alcohol get poured on her and she just stood there and they really did. She's the youngest one of the group. And I give the kid credit. She was tormented by four or five of them. Like, that's really hard. That was like hardcore bullying. I mean, yeah. people go to jail for that shit today, now, Jesse. Did you check out the uh, bonus scenes on the website that I, I, I think I had mentioned? No. Check the scenes out. Everyone at home, check the scenes out. And it really shows you how shady Shelly is. From what I've seen, I mean, Judy really looked up to Shelly going into the house. Um, They didn't really show that in this. They kind of just made it seem like Judy was just out of nowhere. uh, Starting trouble. Starting trouble with Shelly. But as we see in the bonus scenes, Shelly's the one saying, I'm not trying to get to know anybody. I'm not trying to befriend anybody. She follows me around. She tries to be my little, like follower i'm not about that she is so insecure well so let's talk about because last week judy and shelly got into an argument they started the scene off this week judy coming back into the house and uh seeing what shelly did to her bed now normally you would think someone would pop off or get upset with that and judy was kind of calm seeing plants dumped on her bed and actually shelly's the one who woke up and started arguing towards right, her right um and I think everyone's just in the house kind of getting annoyed at at the whole argument between uh, Shelly and Judy. I don't understand it because Shelly's the oldest in the house. So why are you pitting yourself I, against she, the she's youngest? She's just really insecure so and you really think it's lame insecurity. and bored and just... Yeah, she's hot. I mean, the first starting the fight with Judy, you got to hang with the family. You get the girl like, what the hell? The first night out, she met a guy. Like, I absolutely think insecure. Absolutely won't... Afraid of um, sassy, won't stand up to mm-hmm. her. She think she's all. I think she's a bully. I think she's all talk. And you know, um, at first I liked her, but then I saw she really. Um, I don't know. She let me down because she she got the drink thrown at her. Didn't do anything. Yep. And it was nice to see with her girlfriend, but then just go be with your girlfriend or just why do you have to yeah just, why, why are you ruining the season for us yeah well well no it's entertaining i mean so it's it, but why you she just seems you know she, that like little click and i I'm, I'm seeing this with some of the girls on jersey shore which i don't mind them for but this is the bad girls club on the jersey shore i'm seeing some of the girls they're getting kind of bored they're bored of the club scene they want to go be with their boyfriends you can see they want to rent movies and settle down and take that next step but this is bad girls you know i don't want that in this house and I see like that little faction led by Shelly. That's just right. boring. You know what, though? I wouldn't even say it's led by Shelly. Um, you think it's led by the... I think the insecurity comes into play with the fact of Shelly doesn't feel like she can really relate to anybody in the house. Oh, okay. And I think she probably could relate to Stasi uh, and that crew more so. And I think, I don't want to say jealousy came into play because it's almost like Stasi took in Judy. Right. 
rather than taking uh, Shelly in. And Shelly just kind of said, well, you know what? I'll just stick over with Priscilla and Tasha. Tasha, to me, is the the grime in this season. She's just that girl. She talks the most trash. She, I'm better than anybody else. And Tasha's the Persian princess. The Persian princess. princess. Yep. Um, I'm better than everybody else. I have to, if you're talking to somebody, I have to t- judge him and whoever you're talking to. Uh, and, you know, as we saw tonight, you know, she's talking about, I want a guy with dreads and a tattoo. Um, and Priscilla sat there and said, oh, dreads are gross, you know, and th- what dreads are, are you leave your hair, you don't wash it until it gets matted. Exactly what Priscilla was saying. And Tasha, it's funny when Tasha gets put in the position of, looking like she's wrong, she has every excuse in the world to throw back at it. No, well, every guy I've been with with dreads is, you know, it smelled fine, and it's fine. No, it's fine, it's fine. But when Priscilla was talking to, you know, broke down Polly D, you had everything in the world to come at her with, and right. it wasn't appropriate. To me, that's jealousy of Definitely. she got a man first before you. She's very bo- another one, very bored and very petty and very jealous, materialistic and... And yeah. uh, not yeah. like you know, there's a, there's there's train wreck and enter- there's a when they're um, despicable and it's entertaining, mm-hmm. and then it's like when it's not entertaining. Like Angeline from Jersey Shore wasn't entertaining. She was vapid. She did, just didn't feel, didn't connect with other people, and it wasn't entertaining. Well, and, it's and I think like that slap in the face where they got Dina, who's right? Like almost like Angeline, just like ten times, but but ten times, but connected. She's a young kid. She's you can see she's got a lovable heart, right? And it's fine if you don't, if you're despicable, you know, then be Judy and entertain us. Right. <laughs> Whereas the Persian princess is not entertaining me. Well, at it, all. She's not. And even Judy, I wouldn't even put her in despicable. I just put her in young. Because if you notice with Judy, she does some dumb things. But it's always when Stasia, or someone corrects her. But you her, think she cares? She wants to learn. Yeah, I do. I really, th- oh, okay. I really think she wants to learn. I think she do- just doesn't know any better. I mean, when she called her mom, her mom was like, well, I hope you whoop that bitch's ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's this falling from? You know, a hundred percent. But but still, it is what it is, Jesse. Right. Like no. you know, what I mean, like I thought the same thing. It, this is where it's coming from, but I didn't see. You know, she's even when she's not getting attention in the car, she's like, I gotta stir things up. I gotta show him on the bad Judy's a basker. Like I think that she's. Um, I don't think there's anything there, but she answers. She's very entertaining, and yeah. so I like that. Um, so they went out to the club and. Now the we're, we're speaking of stirring the whole pot's about to get stirred at this club scene where Angie is kind of being torn in between the two groups. It's funny because Judy was being torn in between the two groups too because Priscilla right. and Tasha were kind of trying to manipulate Judy whereas I think they really do like Angie. Uh I do I do actually really like Angie. I think she's one of the ones in the house that will say what she wants to say. I think she's right. a little more of a pit fire than she should be spitfire she's, than she, she should be. She seems like a nice kid. You're right. Yeah, that's she, probably the one that's decent. Right. Um so now she doesn't know who to be, you know, side with in the house. Um I think the Staten Island girl's nice too. She's probably decent too. Who is the Staten Island girl? Uh the other Latina. Priscilla. Yeah. Actually I do like Priscilla. Everyone right. else uh, who normally is here doesn't really? care for her. Um, I think she's very, she follows the yeah. other girl. Fine. I think out of everybody who's the most insecure, I would say it's probably Priscilla because you're really you're following Tasha. And maybe if Priscilla and Shelly went away and talked to each other and kind of gone the same level. The only reason it's not insecurity, Jesse, she, I don't think she's been around these other kind of girls. Okay. So I think it's she's just fine in her relatable. click. Right. It's probably those kind of girls that like that that I don't know if we want to call it a parasilton type or whatever, but I feel like it's that kind of girl. Yeah. Because she's I not you, she's a little bit confused by some of these things. You can tell she's never she feels like she hasn't been around before. Um now here's where Angelique showed her name, I mean her age to me when she was in the car scene with Stasi and she brought up the situation about how she kind of felt Angie was going back and forth between everybody. Uh and Angie was denying her friendship with Priscilla and Tasha. That kind of bothered me, you know, because it's like all these girls I feel are so intimidated by Anastasia. 
And to me, I feel like Nastasia is the one girl that you can go up to and say what you want to say and have the real conversation, and nobody does that with her. She, Nastasia is always the one. Nastasia is the one sitting uh, right. sitting in the bed. Yep. Um, Tiara, I'm very off and on with Tiara. Uh, the the girl lying down, the one who stole Tasha's man tonight. Uh, Tasha had gone out to the club. Uh, her friend Emmis, who we don't really know how she knows him. Um, a, he keeps popping up throughout the episodes that at the clubs. Um, and as his cut, he brings his cousin, his cousin, Mister Waka Flocka Lookalike. Yeah, uh, and she's obsessed in love. Just yep. he dread the clean dreads, tattoos. She's yep. got it. Um, but of course, she has to be the Persian little princess, and she's like going to be prissy with him, and that's just not going to work. You invite him to the house, and then expect him. To not think you're going, he's going to sleep with you, right? Or at least do something, right? Right. So they go to the house. She shows him around, and was it at the house that Tasha started talking to him? Yes, he was. He was leaving, and that's when the beginning of the robbery occurred. Oh, the beginning of the. I like how you put that. Uh, Tasha, Tiara said, "I want Tasha's man." Um, but yeah, the girls basically took the guys around the house. Again, Shelly instigating with Judy. Right. Judy sitting on the bed with the guy, and Shelly has a blow horn blowing oh, it. Oh, yeah. Like, get out of the room. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm sure nobody was doing that when your girlfriend was in the house. No, of course not. Um. So the second time, Shelly, Priscilla, and Tasha come back to the house late. This is fast forwarding to the next day. Um. I don't know if you remember, it was the second or third episode where Priscilla, Shelly, Tasha went out to go get their nails done, and then they were supposed to pick up the other girls to, for dinner, and instead they got dinner, the three of them, and then uh, went back to the house late to go pick them up for the club. The other girls were pissed off, it was rude, then they the girls tried to deny that it happened, they did it again tonight. What would you do if you were in this situation? Well, I mean, can you even get into the mentality of... This is the second time somebody said, okay, we're going to be here at this time. Everyone should be ready by 9 o'clock. They did the right thing leaving them. That, exactly. And they not, totally they did the right thing. They have a car there. And so they have a like, car. It's like, stop. They did the right thing by leaving. And it, it's fine, Justin. I hope I'm not throwing you off with this. Uh -huh. I'm noticing the girls do seem very bored at these clubs. Well, here's the thing. In some of the scenes. I don't know what the club life is like in New Orleans ever since the whole Katrina thing. And, but, but they're probably not able to go because of their brand. A lot of the, maybe some the really bars don't clubs. don't want them there. And I'm seeing just, it looks very thin. Yeah. And they look very, like there's just a couple of shots of them doing some dancing alone and pointing to each other alone. But then just sitting there like drinking, sitting alone. I don't know, just look very care. look closely these places don't look like they're cracking no but uh you know Deidre it doesn't look brought like up the fact fun. that she thinks it's because new orleans really actually it wasn't dj it was courtney we had court i tried to suck courtney into the bad girls she didn't get into it no she can't come on uh on the days we do it but unfortunately um but the first episode i got her in here and she doesn't really think new orleans is as it's just still Party beat up. right now. Yeah. yeah, it's too bad. You know, and I understand it. They're probably still building it up. And I think that's why the bad girls came to New Orleans. Because it's so cheap? Uh, cheap to shoot? No, I think well, that... Well, Louisiana has a tax that, rebate. I think it's just they want to boost up their party scene. And so, oh, the bad girls can party. Look how fun the bad girls had. You that's, know. Why, that's why Louisiana and New Orleans took them in, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Um, not only that, but last season was the first season where the girls actually left L.A. Because normally this is based out of L.A. Last season they did it in Miami. Um, and so this season they're here in New Orleans. And next season they're in Vegas. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, that's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just think the club life is really dead here. I mean, these girls are getting their faces painted like every night. Really? Yeah. What, what are we doing here? And every time they go out, it's always like one or two guys approach them. Right. And they're in some dive bar. Um, so it's amazing we're getting the entertainment value we are. Oh, but and that's why I think maybe that's why they chose the people they did because Judy can just be put in a room and she'll start talking yeah. to the wall. She's fine. Making yep. friends with microphones and whatever. I agree. Um, 
So yeah, we going back to you know, the girls ditching them out for the second time. Stasi, Tiara, Judy, Angie, they go get their food and they decide we're not gonna go get the girls. We're not gonna pick them up. So here's where the bomb explodes. They go out to the club, Shelly, Priscilla, and Tasha decide, you know what? We know they're not gonna pick us up. Let's right. get in the car and meet them out there. They come back they uh they meet them at the club, attitude adjustment hour. Um the boys show up because Judy Set now, Judy set the whole situation up here. Judy got she got her guy. We don't know his name. No idea, mark. which was great. And by the way, kudos to the producers of this show. Always infusing a lot of humor. But subtly, question marks yeah, absolutely. Or uh, when Tiara doesn't know the guy's name, Fontino's, Fontino's name, name, Carlos, Carlos dreads Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> um. So that was funny. But they're at the the club and dreadlock boy, little Fontino, starts flirting back up with Tiara. Um, and Tasha's over in the corner, so jealous, so yes. jealous, but trying to act like she's better. It than doesn't me. matter. Take my sloppy yeah. seconds. Actually, da, da, da. where's my? There were no sloppy seconds. That's what I'm saying. And it was totally ridiculous. Him. No, nothing. You, you took him on a tour of your house. Yeah. Um, but then kept saying this uh, little comment about where's my ten percent? My I'm, I did the booking. Yeah, fee. just like just, just again, you look stupid. Yeah, just move just on. Just didn't know what to say. Yeah, exactly. I liked how. What's her name? The 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 really hot black girl who doesn't dance well. Tiara. Tiara. She. I loved what she said to the guy though. She was like, "Don't play games with me. You walk me out. Don't be playing." Oh, she the, said to him. Yeah, I she, love that. She said, "If you want to be with me, she was like, if you want to come with me, you can walk me to the door." Yep. <laughs> yeah. She and I was like, man, that's good, you know, because I've seen guys be able to jump back and forth like that and play mm -hmm. girls. I love that. No, and she wanted. She to went sure. right at him. Yep. Of you're course, gonna, you're, she's you're committing. See, yes, right. So now you've burned that bridge that you're fully committed to this one. Um, and I even liked when the guy showed up at the house. Yep. And Tiara didn't go downstairs to get the guy. She said, "If you can't walk past three, I forget what the word she used. Yeah. <laughs> and come up and see me." She was like, "Then you don't deserve me. Then you can stay downstairs. It ain't nothing off my bed." I mean, I, I give her credit for that. Yeah, that's actually that, pretty healthy. That was hilarious. It is just you know that's how you see most girls get. I've seen the guys play the two girls. Well, and it was also good on her behalf because it's like, I was attracted to your man, yes, but I didn't force feed him. Right. I gave him the option. I said, "Hey, you can have her still, but if you want me, you're gonna come upstairs." Yeah. And he walked right past her, went upstairs. Peace. Peace out. Um, <laughs> you know, also uh, funny in the club when Stasi was like Tiara. Go get her man. When she uh, Stasi pushed her to go do that, <sighs> you know, me, Deidre, and Christina, we every week we watch Stasi. Which, by the way, we will have Stasi uh, calling in next week nice. for an episode, um, and then she'll be coming in later in the season. I don't know how I feel about her because at first, you know, I'm like, oh, she's the realest bitch in the house. Yeah. 100%. She's but my favorite. But now I'm starting to see little things. And I don't know if it's just, like you say, the Stockholm Syndrome and she's just, like, reacting to it. But there's just little things that I'm noticing that are, like, like Angie said today, you know. Stasi won't get in somebody's face. You know, she calls her uh, Shelly Sasquatch behind her back, but won't say it to her face. She did throw the drink at her, though. She did throw the drink at her. But at that same time, she was backed into a corner. And I think when you back her into a corner, she'll react to your face. Because the second time she was backed into a corner was the laundry room scene. Which was kind of crazy to me. And it was like, right. you didn't, ha you like really punched the girl because she took your laundry out. React, yell at her, tell her, right. put her business out. But you punched her. Again, could be editing. We don't know what happened. That's, you know? That is very true. Um, so yeah, Tasha's really upset with this whole Fontino situation. Tiara... And Do you think they slept together, Tiara and Fontino? Well, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what to say that because I don't really know why the other guy was left on the bed and then Fontino was in the room right. with it. Now, I did notice Fontino was a little excited in his boxes. Well, very excited in his right. boxes. So. so, And if he's bouncing around in there, I know Stasi is all about the hookup. Tiara hasn't really commented about it, so yeah, I believe you it. You think so? I, I did. 
Um, and he was good looking enough for it to happen. Okay. So. And not even that, but I, I feel like Tiara is the type of girl like you get yours, I get mine, and we're out of it. Yeah, we're done. You know, um, kind of like a Naomi from the Real World this past season, right? I th- I, so yeah, I do think that they hooked up. Um, what did we get after that? The girls are arguing after that situation, oh, and, uh, and J- Judy ended up actually hooking up with her. Yeah, her guy didn't know guy. his name, but whatever. She, yeah, her second bout of sex in the house. She said it was really great, and then maybe they'll do it in L.A. or in, in, in well, no, California, and, and then they're gonna move to Miami. Miami and get married, which will be amazing. That is amazing. Um, Judy, I think you should have stuck with the first guy you hooked up with because this was yeah, like, she was definitely downgraded. I mean, it was a downgrade. But you know, the kind of guys I like are the ones with the Gucci hat and the blinged out watch. Yeah, and the diamonds. Yeah, <laughs> just awesome. Really, I love it. Um, there's my favorite girl, Angie, who got yeah. she uh got made my into little, a Sunday. My Latina heat got made into a Sunday this yep. episode. Um, love that. Now, the whole fight situation with Tiara and Tasha, Tasha calling Tiara a fake ass bitch. From what you've seen, who would you put in the fake ass bitch category? Oh, the Persian princess is a fake ass bitch. Yeah. She has like this whole. She hates homos. She makes con. She makes, uh, I guess, off-colored racist jokes, where it's like it's almost acceptable, but it's almost like you would take a double look. Like, was she just being racist? Um, where she feels like I'm Persian, I can say what I want. There's to so say. many LA people like that. I see them, and they're just gross. And they all drive their Beamers and the Mercedes, and it's just like they have the big giant glasses and just. There's this whole subculture of them in L.A. And I don't mean Persians, but I mean that, like, like a Paris Hilton type or whatever. But they, they dress that way. They act that way. They all, drive, like I said, it's the BMW or it's the Mercedes. <laughs> and all the guys they hang out with kind of look the same. they just tacky and gross. And it's just like, you know what? I'm I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. And then even, like, to pull your, your pants down and be like, my ass is bigger than yours. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more black than you. It's not, yeah, like, Yo, bitch, I'm Persian. You're only blacker because you went and got a spray tan today. Mm. And you admitted that last night. Yeah. So, so anyways, another scene that I was kind of questionable about, which kind of made sense, Angie was sick, throwing up all night. And then what's Shelly her name? took Shelly in. moved in. Moved and in. this is after Shelly and Angie had gotten to this push. And by the way, Shelly, Shelly, not, not evil. Just, no, no. just I feel like insecure and and it's just I just I feel like she's just so trying to find her, make her mark in the house, find her role. Like she just doesn't know what to do. Right. It's like but she, she can't is be older. The, the head of the house because right. I think she feels Stasi took that. She over. wanted to be that. She can't be the so most now, attention in the she, house because took, Judy does that. Right. So she wants the rebel faction. She's been. It running. doesn't work. For doesn't her, work. No, not at all. And I think she jumped in. To help uh, the little one. I think she's got a decent size, but I also think it was like that she'd rather have that than fight. You mean befriending? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I, but I was just even more surprised, you know, Stasi wasn't mm. there to help Angie out because usually when Judy is trash, Stasi Stasi's the one taking the care of her. Well, we don't know what time it was. It might have been early. And also I thought, you know what, maybe editing took this mm-hmm. in and yep. they're creating a story right now. Um, you know, this is the second time also Angie was trying to explain a situation to Tasha and Priscilla and nobody else was backing her up. Um, I mean, I felt like in that scene, this was editing, I felt like Stasi was ready to move. She was When she was in the bed? No, no, no. In the fight, we get into the fight. Where she felt no one backed her up? Well. Because <laughs> I think we skipped over the brawl, right? Yeah. Just I, like, Well, because well, I want to get into, the, I'm getting into the whole okay, Angela, sorry. Angie, Stasi and Shelly situation. Gotcha. Um, you know, she didn't take care of her that night. So this is the second time that she's felt. Betrayed, betrayed or not exactly. backed up. Right. So then even with the fight. I definitely think. I don't know where Stasi was actually because from the overhead shot Judy was the only one downstairs. Now, they just kept showing a single shot of her with her 
hands on her hips, right. but maybe she wasn't really there. And then they cut, the last scene was Stasi walking up the stairs behind Judy, uh, behind Angie. And this is the for the fight. For the fight. Right. Um. And right, then right. again with this fight, I think it was just more about my balls are bigger than yours. You know, Shelly just does this pushing and yelling and getting in the face. Oh, but my little Latino heat, my future wife, was just was amazing. Was following her around. Oh, like, yeah. No, what did you say? I called you Sasquatch. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Went up the stairs, I downstairs. ain't afraid of you, bitch. Shelly never does that. Shelly will. The only person Shelly will walk to and get in the face is Judy. Right. Which doesn't make sense to me because... We've seen Judy, Judy snap off back. on her last time. Um, so I really wanted Shelly, because, you know, Shelly made the comment tonight, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with this house. I thought she was going to punch her. I wish she kind of did. I wanted to see that. I wanted to see Angie snap back at her and give us a retaliation. Um, but we didn't really see that. They yeah, we're saving it for it. the pay-per-view. Right? Which we're going to see next week. We're really excited about that. So excited. Um, but basically, Stassi and Tiara said, you know what? We're tired of you yelling at them. We're not wasting our breath. You shouldn't be wasting your breath. But then at the same time, Angie is rooming with those girls. Right. So in that case, it's almost like she has to find some sort of... I think you're right, Jesse. I mean, I know Angie's young, but I think something went down that we didn't see edited. For her to turn... Against Switch Stassi sides. and yes. Tiara. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's just a situation of maybe she got left behind one time or something along that lines because Angie and Judy both want to look up to Stasi and Tiara. They think they're the cool girls. Um but when they flip sides they think Shelly and Tasha are the cool girls. Right. Or like the nice girls. Right. Like the good friends. So they don't know really where to go. So Judy and Angie are almost on the same level as... uh, Well, they're the young ones, right? That's what it seems to me. They're the babies of the house. Um, Also interesting, Shelly said, you know, I feel Stasi's group is weak and will break down. And to me, that's funny because for the past three episodes prior, you were complaining about how Tasha was being homophobic making all the gay comments oh, yeah. and using the word faggot. Um, and then as you explained what that what was wrong with that word, you kind of just sided with her. You just let it rest easy. And that's what upset me with it because it's like, you'd rather allow this girl to speak this way and act this way. And she honestly means it. Like she yeah, had 100%. no pity. She no. was like, I use the word. None. So what? Get over it. Yeah. You allowed to you sat at a table and let someone that's like letting someone spit in your face and just sitting there and being wiping it off and saying, Oh, I'm sorry you just spit in my face. Right. I'm sorry. But you hate Judy? I don't get that. I don't get it at all. Because One, I think because I don't think it bothered the words really bothered her. I think she's just bored and looking for a fight and just kind of looking to be on the high ground and just again looking do for Do you think it's that or do you think it really is what Tasha says? You know, she always wants to put the gay out there. You know, whenever a gay topic gets put up, she always has to step in and say, "Well, I'm a lesbian." That yes, well, but that speaks. To me. Yes, a hundred percent. But that speaks to my point. Just so trying to make a mark, have a role. They just insecure, Jesse. Like, wh- 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 what am I going to be on this house? Am I going to be the tough one, the fun one, the lesbian one? How do I get my voice heard? How do I stand out? You know, what it is. It's like it goes from that first episode. Judy made out with a guy. Right. Big deal. Get with the family. I mean, don't you? How many of those kind of people have you known that are just, you know, they're really unhappy and they're bored. And so they're kind of getting in everyone's business and always just kind of looking for a reason, you know, unless they're the center of attention, unless the girlfriend's in town or whatever. That's what it seems like to me. Just very unsure of herself. And she befriended, you know, the weaker girls in the house. Yes. So she can kind of have a clan. Right. And I think that's why she helped. What's her name? Angeline. Angie. She's sick. A little bit, to a degree. I, I don't think she's a bad kid. Just I think, a bit to build her army? Yes. Okay. But I don't think she's I don't think she's bad because I saw her with her girlfriend and she's not a bad kid, but she's unsure of herself. And I and I, it reminds me of me at that age. I was just, just like that. I didn't know often which way to go. So I would just glom on to like, you know, whatever moment I could grab. And that's just what it seems like what she's doing. Well, I'm excited because we're actually gonna have her in studio. Within the next couple of weeks, um, so hopefully we can get 
I won't be here. Get to know who she <laughs> who she really is. Um I think you're gonna find so her to be very nice. And I think also it's like when these kids see these shows, it's like, oh my god. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping is gonna happen with Judy. I hope she comes out of this, watches this and mm. takes that next step in growing up. I think she's gonna no, I think no, I you think she'll feed off of it. And I be think like, it's gas, baby, on I the fire. I need to be oh, the voodoo yeah. queen. Oh yeah, voodoo, whatever, baby. Oh yeah, yeah. And she's young, Jesse. Oh, oh hell yeah, and she's not Snooky. No, no, I'm Snooky. There's a sweetness and innocence to my kids over on the shore. You know, with those kids, it's like no, no, these guys, uh, uh-uh. uh, they're gonna keep going. What's up, baby? We gotta get Judy in here. Gotta oh, get Judy goodness. in. Now, Judy's a star. <laughs> she is. She's a star. She's the star of the seventh season. She is, and I'll tell you, I think she's. She'll be. She's gonna hang around on oxygen, do other things. Oh. You know, she's. She's bold. She and isn't that one of the words that uh, oxygen uses for the catchphrase? Right. Bold and something. That's what. Yeah, she epitomizes it. Um. So at the end of the se- the episode, they go to another club, and they're kind of just give us a little taste, a little, you know. How, here's the line. Right. Hook it and we'll pull you in next week. Oh, I could see on the TiVo we were going toward the yep. end. I'm like, no. <laughs> They're just going out in the club the last five minutes. Angie's fed up with the girls. So Angie's the feisty one. She's going to snap off. She's going to, she's got this little pepper in her right now. The chess pieces are placed because Angie is the only one in the house other than Judy. Angie's the only one in the house that will bark. Right. So now the other team, because to me the team is Stasi, Tiara, Judy, and Angie. Right. Now the other team, which is Priscilla, Shelly, and Tasha, now they have a girl that will bark. So they can just feed Angie with all this, no, you know what, Stasi says this, and as we saw in the club scene, Angie was coming out and talking a lot of trash, saying, oh, Stasi will never say anything to your face, and basically... You were friends with these girls, right. now you're now, telling no. all their secrets. She, she turned. And so she throws the drink at... No. But no, she didn't throw the drink. They got inside the uh, the taxi, and from what Shelly said, everyone had a good oh, night. the taxi's limo. The limo. Right. Uh, dun, dun, and they did the had, freeze yes. of the hand. It wasn't her... Whose hand it was, was it? Shelly. Shelly said, I'm done with Judy's mouth. Grab the drink. Oh, she went at Judy. Poured it in her face. That's right. And it spilled on... On Stassi. On Mama Stassi. And on Tiara, because Tiara was on the other side of Judy. And, because at the end, when they all started, like, yeah, clawing the, and everything... Stasi got flipped out. She started reaching over. Tasha had her foot up in the air, kicking. Judy was pulling Shelly's hair. Angie was involved with the fight. But I believe it was Priscilla and Tasha at the end that were just trying to like hold Shelly back. Right. And what we're gonna They're flip, not gonna fight. What we're gonna flip to though is later, you know, for scenes from next week, is that this ends up turning into it looked like Angie and Shelly in cuffs. Well, let's go to a a commercial break, and when we come back, we'll come back with predictions. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. This television, and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespearean. You You never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy, Nucky is a villain. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? <laughs> the wig! The wig no, will come off. That wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. Bad girls, bad girls, what you wanna do? This is a little too mellow of a song for them. It'd be those slow montages of them smashing glasses and predictions. Alright, so all I can say is just pure amazing next week. Next week's gonna be Ecstasy. awesome! Hey, this is what Bad Girls Club is about. It's sad it's the seventh episode. If one of these girls doesn't kicked out, get kicked out, in this episode, I'm going to be furious. 
Okay, so Jesse, edify us. So they get kicked out, and then they bring in a new bad girl. Yes. And what happens to that old bad girl? Do they ever bring her back? She'll the last be back episode? for the reunion. Just the reunion. Yes. Wow. Um, and they kick her out without her being able to explain anything to anyone. She can't call back. I believe there was one season where a bad girl kept trying to call back, and all the girls would hang up on her. And which fueled the reunion. These reunions are awesome. Um, they're hosted by Perez Hilton, Perez which Hilton, is like the right? perfect person for they're this awesome. type of a show. Um, and he aggravates him to the max with like squirt guns and <laughs> yeah, he, sit down awesome. and start spraying them. And then they get furious. They want to fight him. And oh, it's like taming animals. But no, you know, Bad Girls is about the fights. It's about, ki- uh, you know, season five, which everyone, you know, the most there's always catchphrases every season. Season five was, you're done. You're done. Leah and Kristen didn't like each other at first, but they ended up teaming up with each other. And then they were like, we don't like her. Let's get her out the house. And they would literally like destroy you mentally until you threw a punch and got kicked out of the house or just left. Season five had the biggest turnover rate. I think it was like four or five girls kicked out of the house. And so we had four or five new girls being brought in. Um, and that's the thing with this season uh, you know we're in the 6th 7th episode and we're just seeing the pushing starting now I just we need somebody else I don't know there's just so many disposable characters here you know Priscilla's kind of boring Tasha but is but the punch we need to lose a disposable character I'm scared if we're going to lose one of our ballers Jesse I don't think we'll lose a baller um, as Natalie said you know last week the producers love drama. And basically, if Judy wants to punch somebody, unless she's like really physically like hurt them, they're not going to get rid good. of Judy. Judy's got a so free pass. Judy's here for the season. Nice. Um, I, The thing about even Shelly I like is because she does stir up the pot. She definitely does. But I could kind of do without her. If we're going to get a spitfire in there, I need somebody who's going to go in there and say, because a lot of the seasons when they bring a new girl in, they the new girl knows I'm not going to be liked in this house, so I just got to go in there and run shit. Going tough. Well, you know, that happened on, was it uh, was it Real World? That girl took that Cookie. advice. Cook and Cook took that advice from other people and regretted it. Well, like, but see, it's, it's not different. The, right, different it's on the real world. Di- it's a different real world show. Because the real world is a family family. As I said, These girls bizarro universe of reality <laughs> shows. Don't go... No, this is like, yeah, it's, it's A plus B does not equal C. Not at all. Because gravity doesn't apply, like just a whole different set of laws here. Uh, And it's interesting because next week we see Angie switches teams. Um, Angie and Shelly get arrested. But it looked like Angie and Nastasia were the ones that were fighting. Because Nastasia looked... Stasi, Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. No. I think she went after the giant. Think you think Stasi went after Shelly? No, I think... No. Or Angie I went think after Angie him. went after Nastasi. Then Shelly, being like codependent, just type... Then she finally jumped in and stood up to Stasi to defend her new little protege. And, I mean, Judy looked pretty quiet next episode. I'm so ready. We'll I am ready for Shelly to, to just... Woman up and take on Stasi. I'm ready to see the battle of the giants. She can do it. She can hang with her. She may not be able to beat her, but let's stop like, let's go. If there's anyone that can stand up to Stasi, it's her. Stop being afraid. All right, Shelly. So hopefully next week. Yeah. We can. Because uh, here's the thing, Jesse. Yeah, you got the black card. But in like, in the whole like sick racist universe, does lesbian Trump oh, black? Far. Really? Far. Absolutely. Oh, great. So what is she doing? Step up, girl. But, and that's what she has to own that. Po- she has to own that power. Seriously. <laughs> and just be like, you know what? You might be black, but I'm lesbian. And, and I just I just need the statement. No, I'm the baddest bitch in, in the, the house. house. We just need that. But Stassi says that, mentality. though. So right now, I say uh, Stassi's the baddest bitch in the house as of now. I agree with that. Right? Not Judy? 
Well, no, uh, no, because Judy versus Stasi, Stasi would win. Stasi's the best bitch in the house. Okay, can we all, all you uh, bad girls, remember to buy? Yes, please. Um, the Every Girl Guide <laughs> to Life by Maria Menounos. I think it's a great book. I think I don't think after anyone... the season, go, we need this yeah. drama. We need and the hot after mystery. This, Afterwards, girls, we pick this yes. up. You know, Jesse, you need to give. Can we have these on hand for them? Did you give well, one? We gave to the, Natalie. Oh, one. good. We good. Knew, we made sure Natalie had one, um, and we'll definitely make sure. Yeah, uh, something's telling me they're not reading. Next week them. we have N- Nastasia. She's going to call in, so that'll be a great episode for her to call in. So we'll get. I want to send drama. her. Will you mentioned her. We'll send her a book. We're absolutely going to send her one. And uh, thank you for having me in. And, uh, and if everyone bails us. next week, I'd love to come back. Uh, well, hopefully <laughs> that happens again, so that we can have you in studio. Yeah, again. it's an amazing show, Jess. So until next time, guys, we'll see you next Monday at 8 p.m. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, buzz you later, later, bitches! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. After-